Among the English people, Brexit was all about immigration, but the driving force behind the Leave campaign always was big money. Basically, the whole economy more than 81% and growing of England is based on capital import. It works as follows, collect illegal money from oligarchs, mafiosi, drug barons, human traffickers, and tax dodgers from all over the entire world. Wash it clean and render it anonymous it in offshore banks and tax havens. Skirt it round regulations, restrictions, and embargoes. Bring it to the city of London and reintegrate it into the legal capital market. Get paid for the legal services. Here the EU regulations are indeed strict and unflexible and are becoming even stricter and more rigid. Anti-tax avoidance act that's what strikes fear into the heart of the bonus bankers. Their entire economic model is on stake. That's why they stop at nothing. Election fraud, illegal data acquisition, lies, propaganda, all paid for with foreign money. That's why they made the geese vote for Christmas. That's why all who want to stay in a legal business move to Dublin, Paris, Frankfurt, or Den Haag. Big international employers cannot afford regulatory divergence, so it will either not happen, or they will leave. Remain the food and environmental standards and the workers' rights. They will be kicked under the bus like the Irish, but the EU isn't going to watch gladly when their standards are undercut for profit. The EU wanted to introduce regulation to Britain's tax havens and banking, which frightened the establishment as a lot of it is illegal. That's real reason Brexit is happening. London is the money laundering capital of the world. People forget or are not old enough to remember that the EU benefited Britain greatly. They originally joined the common market because the UK was bankrupt. They had to devalue the currency. Decimalization took 140 pennies off the pound. Brexit is about protecting overseas tax havens. It has got zero to do with independence or sovereignty. The sheeple have fallen for the lies of Farage and Johnson. Funny how Farage has kept his EU passport and, in 2017, bought a beautiful house in Germany. The US Congress has said there should be no trade deal with the UK until Northern Ireland issues are sorted out. The penny never seems to drop when they talk about trade deals. Brexit is likely to be an utter disaster for the UK and the English people. Time will show us quite soon which version of reality is correct. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. In this video, we will examine the different possible scenarios of what could happen to the UK post-Brexit. Nobody really knows what will happen after Brexit. That's the only honest answer. It is clear the UK cannot cut off all ties with the EU. That's why the negotiations are so hard, they kind of need to be part of the EU, but at the same time, they don't want to be part of the EU. My guess is that the UK will be a de facto member at worse terms than is currently the case and that apart from that, everything will more or less continue as it has before. The facts are as follows. Britain will not be in the EU after Brexit but may be in a transitional exit mode. The EU will comprise 27 countries, I doubt another country will join in the next 18 months, and will probably run on similar lines to that today. Britain will trade in a different manner with EU countries and the rest of the world. Britain will either be better off or worse off economically but will have full autonomy in economic, political, legislative, and judicial matters. No one else knows anything different to the above. The UK will still be there after Brexit. There has been lots of speculation about economic collapse. It is just that, speculation. Let's examine some possible worst-case scenarios. The City of London takes a big hit. The EU extracts its pound of flesh by removing the license to trade euros from London. Several foreign banks relocate to Frankfurt. Some 2,000 top-tier and 10,000 mid-, lower-tier jobs head to Europe. London goes into a sudden downward spiral. House prices bottom out. Life in Frankfurt is so dull compared to London that within six months, it has become a filter for traders. Top traders stay in London, not so hot traders are transferred to Frankfurt. The banks admit that the 10,000 jobs lost to Frankfurt will be gone anyway because of automation. Life in Hull continues as normal. Under WTO rules, the car manufacturing industry grinds to a halt. Parts and cars pile up on both sides of the channel awaiting customs clearance. Japan makes big noises about relocating plants. BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Peugeot, Citroën, Fiat, etc. make bigger noises. 
The ever pragmatic Germans stop pretending and an exceptional customs deal is negotiated with the UK on behalf of the EU. France complains Macron is summoned by the Frau, bent over a chair and smacked hard. It's not clear whether he enjoys it or not. Six months later, car production is back to normal levels. Life in Hull continues as normal. Food shortages hit the shelves of UK supermarkets. The media drive a frenzy of panic buying. The Sun newspaper runs a front page campaign to rename the Brussels sprout. The Lincolnshire green crop rots in the field because foreign pickers can't navigate the new visa system. The price of lamb doubles, on the upside, Welsh farmers put in large orders for new Range Rovers. British farms mechanise big style. Life in Hull continues as normal. Brexit is not a war. It's not a pandemic. There will be winners and losers. Nobody really knows what else will happen after Brexit. There are hundreds of scenarios, but here are the ones I think are most likely, and I'm trying to remain as neutral as possible. Number 1. Re-emergent scenario, Britain will go through a period of profound uncertainty and economic volatility, but will then recover. My guess is that it will take at least 15 to 30 years. Britain has always been a practical nation, and it has both the experience and prowess to weather the storm and emerge as a very strong economy. Number 2. Failed Brexit scenario, Brexit simply doesn't happen for a whole host of reasons. Number 3. Re-entry scenario, Brexit happened because of a small majority, but it was by no means a landslide. It's entirely possible that the older segment of the population who voted for Brexit die off and are replaced by a younger and more politically active pro-Remain camp. A groundswell forces a rethink, and the country re-enters a, hopefully reformed, EU. Number 4. Little England scenario, Scotland becomes independent and applies for EU membership. This might, in turn, trigger reunification in Ireland within a generation. A severely diminished England might need to re-enter the EU. And here are my post-Brexit themes. Number 1. Bigger UK government. The UK government will be spending more money and employing more staff. More staff will be needed at customs and immigration arrival points, at the Home Office to both process more immigration applications and to codify the status of existing EU nationals residing in the UK. More civil servants will be needed at the Department for International Trade to assist with trade relations, trade disputes, and World Trade Organization membership. The courts will have more resources to deal with immigration appeals and civil disputes as a result of legal and regulatory uncertainty. New regulatory bodies will be hastily formed to cover licensing and testing on matters including aviation, medicine, and chemical safety. It will be politically damaging to pass on the extra costs of Brexit to voters through more taxes. So the UK government will fund these additional resources with increased borrowing. Number 2. The Bank of England will print more money. The UK government will instruct the Bank of England to flood the economy with unlimited liquidity to safeguard the UK banking system. And if the UK government is struggling to access foreign markets in order to borrow more money, the Bank of England will expand its QE program. Number 3. Crisis management replacing policy. After Brexit, the UK government will respond to problems as they arise. Other than Greenland 1982-85, no other country has left the EU. The United Kingdom will be the first country to leave using Article 50. Nobody knows what is going to happen, nobody, including the government. Emergency legislation and financial rescue packages will be needed for unexpected developments, including UK companies facing supply chain disruption, cash flow problems, export difficulties, and import delays. The UK banking system will require constant monitoring. Voter panic must be contained or anticipated. Number 4. Scotland will leave the United Kingdom. Facing a no-deal Brexit, Scotland First Minister Nicola Sturgeon holds meetings with the EU European Council. The EU offers EEA membership to Scotland, including the customs union and single market. But EEA membership can only be offered if Scotland votes to leave the UK. Ms Sturgeon and the SNP government offer EEA membership and an end to English Conservative rule as reasons for independence. In the February referendum, Scotland votes to leave the UK. Ms Sturgeon flies to Brussels and arranges immediate temporary cover for Scotland's economy through customs union and single market membership. Full EU membership is not discussed. Number 5. 
Peacekeeping forces are sent to Northern Ireland. Following high-profile British media coverage of undocumented travel by EU citizens across the Northern Ireland open land border, the UK government abandons the Common Travel Agreement. Full immigration controls are introduced. Northern Ireland's nationalist communities protest. Ethnic tensions resurface. The UK government intervenes with temporary measures, including military forces for peacekeeping purposes. Number 6. Most English voters won't care. The UK is out of the EU. The endless tedium of Brexit negotiations is over. Most voters put the experience behind them and move on. In conclusion and broadly speaking, I think that there are three possibilities for the UK after Brexit. 1. The overall benefit is, most businesses stay in the UK, not willing to move out before anything which affects them particularly badly. Because of this, the economy stays stable, and free trade agreements are reached with other countries, and possibly the EU becomes willing to give the UK access to the open market for very limited, no cost. Small businesses initially benefit from the lack of foreign competitiveness from leaving the free market, cementing a place for themselves even if the free trade agreement returns. Politically, the Conservatives stay in power for their handling of Brexit, turning a potential disaster into success, whilst the Scottish hold a referendum but decide to remain part of the UK, as it is still not worth risking leaving the UK to stay part of the EU. Socially, EU residents are able to enter the UK at relative ease, although they can't claim benefits, free healthcare, or free education until they have worked in the UK for a significant amount of time. This reduces the amount of EU immigrants drastically, whilst the British people benefit by slightly more manageable public services, which all have slightly more money put into them. I believe and definitely hope that this is the most likely possibility. 2. The overall disadvantage is, more people are hurt by Brexit than those who benefit. Many small businesses lose their ability to trade with Europe, and many large businesses leave. Free trade agreements with other countries fall through, and either Britain is left as a tax haven or forced to pay extra for free trade agreements with the EU, to stabilize their economy. However, most large businesses stay in the UK, as nothing major enough has happened to cause them significant damage, which would cost them more money than to move out of their headquarters to another country. The Conservatives still get elected for another term, as Corbyn is still the party leader, causing great divisiveness among Labour MPs and members. Socially, Britain can't cope very well with the destabilized economy, meaning less money goes into public services than when the UK was in the EU, making a living harder for people in Britain. People from the EU stop wanting to move to Britain, as Germany is doing much better than the UK. However, people move on with life, and nothing catastrophic happens to damage the economy permanently. 3. The catastrophe scenario is, more and more large businesses are leaving causes a chain reaction. Even Britain attempting to turn itself into a tax haven doesn't work, companies value tax havens such as Luxembourg, which also have access to the free market is much more valuable than the UK. Many small businesses fail, as there isn't enough of a skilled workforce to carry on making competitive products. Nevertheless, Scotland votes to remain in the UK, as nothing catastrophic enough has happened by the referendum, a decision greatly regretted by them later on. The economy collapses, as other free trade agreements fall through. Labour gets elected, and the Conservatives have a gigantic stain on their history, making them unelectable for the next two terms at least. Nobody wants to immigrate to the UK, as all worthwhile business opportunities have left for other countries. The combination of this catastrophic Brexit, and Trump, lead to both the UK and the USA losing their former glory, or what is left of it. And English ceases to be the language taught in all schools. So let us know in the comment section below what you think is the most plausible scenario going to be when Britain leaves the EU. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.